All right. So yeah, today I'm talking about consensus in distributed systems. So uh, what the heck is, for those of you who might not be familiar with distributed systems, what the heck is a distributed system? Um, so some examples of distributed systems might be um, multi-node data stores like console or etcd. Um, you might have a database with a primary and secondary replication can be considered a distributed system. Um, network file systems can be considered distributed systems. There are even complex embedded systems that are distributed systems. Um, systems that may have multiple chips, multiple sensors in them. Um, so in these distributed systems, we might have a lot of questions that come up when multiple different nodes in the system have different ideas of what a value is, uh, of what values are for a certain key of in an embedded system, you might have questions about what value does the sensor have. Um, you might have questions about a transaction comes into a data store that has multiple nodes. Should we commit the transaction or not? So we need to have some idea of how to achieve consensus in a distributed system. But because these distributed systems have multiple nodes, we have things like network latency, network failures, uh, network partitions. Uh, individual nodes could go down. So we want to develop some kind of algorithm that's going to allow us to always, hopefully, always reach consensus and always have an idea across the entire distributed system, what this value is. Um, should we commit this transaction? Did we receive this message? We want to be able to agree across the whole system on this. So an example of a consensus problem is you might have a distributed key value store that has multiple nodes. And one client is asking one node, hey, update key A to have value 1. And then simultaneously, or nearly simultaneously, um, another client is coming in asking another node, update value A to have, uh, or sorry, update key A to have value 2. So how does the system decide which of these transactions are we going to commit? What order are we going to process them? Are we going to reject one and accept the other? Are we just going to reject them both? Uh, how does that happen? So. There are a variety of different consensus algorithms, some of which are suitable for different things. Um, in your standard client-server model, which is its own kind of distributed system, um, two-phase and three-phase commit are very popular. You also have other uh, algorithms like Paxos that Dirk referred to and Raft, which is used by, I believe, um, console and etcd. Um, and I'm going to present one that is not any of those and not really used by anybody, but it is uh, it's a simple protocol for instructional kind of demonstration purposes. And it comes from a paper by Fisher, Lynch, and Patterson that was written in 1985. So the basic outline of this consensus algorithm is we have a distributed system where every node has a potentially different initial value. And they all have an identical function, which given all the values, all the initial values that the node is aware of, will decide on a final value. Um, and we want to figure out, we want to have a, a consensus algorithm that will, that will get every node to the same final value. So each node starts out by broadcasting, um, here's my node ID, and here is my initial value. And this is kind of an example of a system we might be in. We might have five nodes. Three of them, one, two, and four, are up right now. Three and five are actually down. So they can't communicate with the rest of the nodes. So node one is going to say, hey, everybody, I'm node number one. And my initial value is, what's my initial value? My initial value is one. Uh, and then the second round, every node says, OK, uh, I'm node one. I have initial value one, and I heard from nodes one, two, and four in the first round, but I didn't hear from nodes um, three or five. So they're all going to broadcast on the second round, not just who they are, but also what their idea of the other live nodes is. And then each of them comes up with this idea of what they think the graph of live nodes currently looks like. So currently, nodes one, two, and four all agree that we have live node one, live node two, and live node four. And they have initial values one, zero, and zero for this key, uh, respectively. And then
All right, we're back. Okay, so each node successfully uh, builds a graph of the nodes it's successfully communicated with, and then applies some function. Maybe it's majority rules, maybe uh, we have a node that's a leader, and it's the leader wins, and they apply a function to the values that they're aware of uh, that the live nodes have, and then come up with a final answer. This algorithm will work as long as over half the nodes are up at the start and no node goes down during the formation of consensus. Unfortunately, if a node goes down during the formation of consensus, you'll get into a deadlock scenario where nodes will be waiting forever for messages that will never come that they need to get in order to achieve consensus. So what happens if we do have a system, which all of our systems basically are, where nodes can go down? Um, can we get a consensus algorithm that will consistently work? Um, and so, so we asked our question, right? Like, is this good enough? Uh, and in order to determine is this good enough, we have to not step on the HDMI cable um, and therefore destroy our connection to the. Uh, I'm moving my mouse. It says no signal. It's a. Uh, let's let's try this again. Hmm. Yeah, nice mountain. So, so that, that that's going to be the rest of the talk. <laughs> uh, I do not know where my other Chrome window is. Get out of the presentation mode. Huh? Get out of the presentation mode and back in. I don't. I don't have like a. Like a view. Chrome. Yeah, I'm trying to go back to Chrome. Okay, here we are. <laughs> All right, unfortunately, I have none of my notes now, so I'm going to be winging it. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. So yeah, we should. So in order to determine if, is this, if this algorithm is good enough, we need to step back and actually give some formal definitions of what's consensus, what's a distributed system. Um, so a working rigorous definition of consensus says that all of our uh, processes will eventually terminate, all of our non-faulty -pro processes will choose the same value, and the final value has to be chosen by some algorithm, by some process. We can't just say, okay, the keys for all the, the values for all the keys in this data store are just going to be zero because we don't care. Uh, that's that's not really going to be a consensus algorithm that we can use. Um, we can actually weaken the definition of termination a little bit to say that some non-faulty process will eventually choose a value. It doesn't have to be that every process will arrive at a value. We just need some process to arrive at a value. And, um, and this is going to be the definition of consensus that we're going to use to prove a nice uh, result from the same paper by Fisher, Lynch, and Patterson that I referred to that that consensus algorithm came from. So our distributed model for this has at least two nodes. Any node can send messages to any other node. Um, asynchronous communication, latency is potentially unbounded, and all nodes use a deterministic algorithm to send messages. Nodes can fail, but messages from a healthy node will always eventually reach their target. That's, that's the important part. So the FLP theorem, which is named after the authors of the paper, Fitcher, Lynch, and Patterson, states that given this distributed system model, and given this definition of consensus, there is no algorithm that will always result in consensus. Um, the authors of this paper are all pretty important people. They all have Wikipedia pages, at least. And Nancy Lynch, in particular, was involved with almost every significant dis result in distributed systems, seriously. She's great. If you just look through her CV and read them, you will learn so much about distributed systems. Um, but I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk more about this theorem and how we prove it. So um, the basic outline is we prove that every starting configuration, if, if we have a, a very simple kind of distributed data store model where we have a single key and the value can be either 0 or 1, um, then we can prove that every initial configuration of the system could eventually result in the key being 0 or the key being 1. There's none that's guaranteed to result in a 0 or guaranteed to result in a 1. Uh, we show that any such configuration can remain um, in a you know ambiguous state, they call it bivalent in the paper, for arbitrarily long if we just delay messages for an arbitrary amount of time. And then 
using those results, we show that there's no starting configuration you have that's guaranteed to result in a consensus. Um, so some of you may see this theorem and think, well, that sounds awfully familiar. How does this relate to the CAP theorem? And some of you may be thinking, what the heck's the CAP theorem? So what the heck's the CAP theorem? The CAP theorem is another better known, probably more talked about uh, impossibility result in distributed consensus, which was also proven by Nancy Lynch and by Seth Gilbert in 2002, conjectured by Brewer in 1998. And what it says is you have three basic properties that you might want in a distributed system. Consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. Every system gets to choose at most two. Um, because it offers us a choice and a way to classify the systems, it gets talked about a lot more because people like to say, you know, their system is CA or is AP um, or CP. Um, CA is not actually possible, but I'll get into that in a moment. Um, but the reality is the definitions of, consi of consistency and availability it uses are very strong. So in reality, very few distributed systems are either consistent or availability or, sorry, available under this definition. So the, uh, the rigorous definitions here are consistency is that every successful read receives the most recently written value. Availability says that every read is successful. And partition tolerance says the system like continues to meaningfully exist if messages are dropped or delayed. That's an essential property. You can't say, oh, I want consistency and availability. At that point, you don't have a distributed system anymore. Partition tolerance is an essential property of a distributed system. But it does give us the ability to say, this system is CP or this system is AP. Um, and so uh, the other the other important thing about this is this is not something you don't have to choose between consistency and availability when the network is up and working properly and low latency you only have to choose that when there is a network partition um, and there are extensions of this theorem about what happens in the case when you do have uh, you do want to classify behavior of a healthy system uh, whether it's low latency or high consistency but I'm not going to get into that right now what I am going to say is that the CAP theorem, um, like what, what is the relationship between this and FLP? Because they seem pretty similar. They're both talking about the availability and consistency of a distributed system under these network latency uh, conditions and under conditions of a faulty network. Nodes can go down, messages can be dropped. So let's take a closer look at the conditions that FLP and CAP are actually talking about. Um, and, and maybe come to a conclusion about, are they logically equivalent? Are they just the same theorem stated twice? So when a node can't receive messages, FLP considers the node to have failed. CAP considers a node to still be up if it can't receive messages, as long as the node is still running. So in order to meet the con definitions of consistent and available under the CAP theorem, the partition nodes still have to be able to serve requests that remain consistent with the rest of the cluster. Um, which explains, which maybe goes some way to explaining why it's so hard to be both consistent and available in the CAP theorem, is you kind of have to communicate with nodes that you may have no ability uh, on the network to communicate with. Another um, difference between their conditions is that FLP assumes all messages will eventually get there. CAP allows for messages to be dropped entirely. Um, Whereas in, in our statement of what the distributed system model was for FLP, if you remember, I, we did say that messages will eventually get where they're going. So because the conditions required for a distributed system to be consistent and available by CAP's definition are so strong, it actually means it's a weaker theorem. You can actually use the FLP theorem to prove the CAP theorem, but you cannot do the reverse. So um, FLP is not talked about that much these days, but I think it is a really surprising and interesting, possibly worrying result in distributed system consensus that's uh, we're thinking about. Maybe, maybe uh, think a little less about CAP and the possibly false dichotomy it offers and a little more about a theorem that um, applies to all systems. So yeah, that's what I have to say. Here are some links and the original paper, if you want to look it up. There's a URL there, uh, and a couple other blog posts that I used to, um, which give a good explanation of the proof in the theorem, and also a good explanation of why FLP and CAP aren't the same thing. Thank you. Questions? All right. Desmond. <laughs>
Can you give some some examples of how like uh, you know etcd or console um, make these trade offs? Yeah. So. Um, I don't have any examples on hand personally. There's a really good series of blog posts called Jepson um, that basically applies actual stress testing to different distributed systems, makes nodes go down, and then classifies like how consistent and how available are these systems. Some systems that he classifies like Amazon's DynamoDB are designed like explicitly for high availability and to be available rather than consistent as the trade-off. Whereas um, I think console that you mentioned um, is one that is designed more for consistency. Um, but he has some other examples that are really interesting. He actually does one with Postgres, which we don't think of as a distributed system in the same way that console or etcd are. But it's definitely one that, you know, it's got the old school like SQL acid style where high consistency is really important. And that's one that's designed for consistency. But again, very few of these actually meet either the consistency or availability definition. Uh, the ones that are supposed to be consistent frequently drop writes. And the ones that are supposed to be available frequently uh, don't respond properly to reads. So it's, it's like a, it, they're, they're ideals that a system might want to live up to. But in the real world, very few do. Any other questions? Dirk. So back to the Paxos paper. Mm -hmm. um, how does it relate to this claim? Because actually, doesn't Paxos claim to solve this kind of problem? I'm remembering it wrong. Yeah, I think it doesn't solve this exact problem because you do have to, I think, uh, weaken the conditions on the network from the FLP uh, theorem a little bit. Um, th so one thing that Fisher, Lynch, and Patterson do point out at the end of their paper is these are very, even in the FLP theorem, which has much weaker conditions than the CAP theorem, these are very strong conditions on our network. These are very strong conditions of like, messages can be just delayed arbitrarily. There's no concept of a timeout, you know. Nodes can fail at any time, and that doesn't necessarily reflect real systems. So I believe in the Paxos paper, they get around that by having some slightly more realistic constraints on the system. That's how real systems also work. Yes, yes, because, you know, we can, we can say like, we, we can make generalizations about you know, how, okay, we have to make pessimistic assumptions, but they don't have to be this pessimistic in order to be realistic. And that is something they bring up at the end of this paper, which is worth reading. Any other questions? Thank you so much. All right, thank you.